Hi guys, I'm Josie, coming at you from my school in Florida. I'm Lucy from Georgia. Hey guys, my name's Annie, and I'm from Massachusetts, and me, Lucy, and Josie are here to talk to you about how sea level rise is affecting our coastal wetlands. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Annie and I'm from Massachusetts and me, Lucy and Josie are here to talk to you about the impact of climate change on coastal wetlands. I'll be explaining what coastal wetlands are and all the great resources that they provide. But first, I'm going to give you some insight on just how important coastal wetlands are to people. So first off, 10% of the global human population lives in low-lying coastal areas and coastal areas provide humans with valuable resources. A lot of major cities are located in coastal areas. Coastal populations are rising and many communities depend on the well-being of their beaches and coasts to attract tourism. Climate change is threatening the stability of coastal wetlands and the rising sea levels are destroying homes that both animals and humans profit from. So some of the great things that coastal wetlands have to offer is that they are great flood storage providers. Wetlands act as a sponge and help maintain and distribute outside water sources across the plains. They also provide storm surge buffering, so wetlands help dissipate large waves caused by storm surges. They're also great erosion controllers. Wetlands have a lot of vegetation and their roots help prevent soil and sediment from being washed away. They also have great water quality. So wetlands recycle a lot of materials that are caused by urban runoff and carried into the wetlands. There are also obviously great fish and wildlife habitat resources. Wetlands create an ecosystem rich with resources for breeding, protection, migration, and nesting for a lot of plants and species of animals. Hey Josie and Annie, I'm Lucy from Georgia, and I'm here to talk about how sea level rise is affecting our coastal wetlands. So, since the 1880s, as we know, heat-trapping gases caused by human activity have increased global temperatures about 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So, temperatures are rising, ice is melting, and oceans are warming. This climate change is the primary cause of current sea level rise. They say that during the next half century, average global temperature is projected to rise by 2 to 5 degrees Celsius, and sea level is to increase by 80 centimeters or more. Alright, so let's break it down. Rising sea level is associated with ice sheet melting and thermal expansion of the ocean, which is the idea that as temperature rises, seawater density decreases, or more simply put, as temperature rises, seawater expands. The ice melting contributes to ocean volume and thermal expansion because it decreases seawater salinity and density. So our question is, will coastal wetlands be able to withstand the increases in the rate of rising sea level? It's reasonable to say that the sea level will rise several decimeters over the next hundred years. Sea level affects the availability of breeding habitats, and the rise of sea level threatens to flood some wetlands. Let's take the city of Boston, for example. By the end of this century, Boston could be underwater. I read a quote in an article, so I'm going to read that back to you now. It says, by the year 2100, climate scientists predict that sea levels around Boston will rise as much as 7.5 feet. In a few decades, water levels will be 2.5 feet higher than they are today. That could mean significant flooding not only during big storms, but twice daily during high tides, as well as at times of normal rainfall. I've never seen Boston flood before, but luckily, the city of Boston is working on plans to build canals to protect the Back Bay and other neighborhoods from flooding. Well, that's all I have for now on how sea level rise is affecting wetlands. What's up with you, Josie? Hi guys, I'm Josie, coming at you from my school in Florida. So, if rising sea levels and increased storms are damaging coastal wetlands so much, are they soon to be destroyed and gone forever? They don't have to be. There are several steps that can be taken to minimize damage to coastal wetland habitats and the surrounding communities. So one option is to locate buffers. Buffers um, around important wetland areas can aid in habitat migration and lessen the potential negative impacts from the surrounding threats. Buffers are pretty much can be made by rocks, land, etc. and just minimize the impact of the sea level rises. Um, 
So in turn, wetlands can also serve as buffers for, hu for human communities and will extend natural protection from sea level rise impacts. Another type of buffer that c can be created are no development buffers, which can be along the landward edge of wetlands. Pretty much as sea levels rise, wetlands migrate landward, and these buffers would prevent the development of upland areas adjacent to wetlands, and this could be accomplished through acquisition or regulation like zoning restrictions and things like that. That type of buffer can help pr uh, protect the human communities that wetlands surround so there won't be even more damage. So another way to help lessen damage to coastal wetlands is to promote connectivity. So a reality here is in order for coastal wetlands and species impacted by sea levels to migrate and survive, the habitats have to be connected in some way for them to transport themselves. So it's important to consider reducing wetland fragmentation by conserving those areas that connect habitats. Um, they use land cover data and wetland migration models to find undeveloped areas such as forests, freshwater wetlands, or restored agricultural or other lands that could facilitate movement. So a final way that we can work to minimize the damage caused by um, climate change that is affecting these really important habitat areas is to practice, practice adaptive management. So no one really knows what the future holds when it comes to um, damage to wetlands. There are uncertainties in the projections of future sea level rise, the ways in which species and ecosystems will respond, and how well specific management actions will facilitate sea level rise ad adaptation. But with these uncertainties, practicing adaptive management is essential. So it, it's really important to monitor the effects of sea level rise on coastal wetlands so that over time we can use the data to assess what more can be done. So those are some steps that can be taken to help minimize damage to coastal wetlands and the communities that they surround. Extensive restoration of coastal wetlands could really um, help many other problems that are caused by climate change, so it's very important to be aware of these options.